And now it's time for our Ask Matt Dickens segment. If you have a question, we're here to provide you answers. Please visit our website. If you go there, list your question, and we'll answer it here on the TV show, maybe on the radio show, but either way, I'll get back to you via email. So let's get started. Mark, what do you have for me? Matt, our first question today is from David in Prospect. He writes, how much stock should an older investor hold? Well, David, every situation is going to be a little bit different. Really depends on what your age is. We had mentioned on, here on the show in the past, there's something called the rule of 100, which says basically whatever your age is, that's the percentage of your retirement assets that should be in a safer position. And the difference between your age and the number 100 is how much money you could put at risk. So David, if you're 60 years old, 60% of your money should be safe, 40% could be at risk in the market. Obviously, if you're 70 years old, the ratios become 70-30. Now, you don't necessarily have to adhere to this rule if maybe you have pension income or some sort of other guaranteed rental income, things of that nature. But if you're relying on your retirement nest egg to provide the income that you need to maintain your lifestyle and your standard of living through your retirement, maybe your spouse's retirement as well, you want to try to adhere to this rule. And if you need more information on this particular subject, you can go to our Facebook page. We have several articles that we've posted out there that address this issue in more detail. So Mark, what do you have for us next? Matt, our next question is from Susan in Louisville, and she writes, I've heard you talk about a strategic wealth report on your radio show. What is it, and is there any cost involved in obtaining one? A strategic wealth report is what we refer to as basically an account audit. And what we're trying to do with the strategic wealth report is figure out exactly what the fees and expenses are that you're paying on your investments. We take a look at the fees and we also take a look at the performance. Because one of the things I mention on the radio show all the time is individuals don't mind paying some fees if you're getting really good value for that, meaning if you're getting good performance. But more often than not, what we will find is individuals are paying fees that are higher than what they thought they were, and the performance really isn't there to justify those fees. So this is something that's very, very valuable for anybody that actually has money invested in a mutual fund in particular. Maybe you've got money on deposit in a 401k where you work, maybe some money on deposit in an IRA at a bank or a stock brokerage firm, something of that nature. If you really want to know what all the fees and expenses are that you're paying, that's what this report will tell us. More often than not, it's much higher than what individuals originally thought before we ran the report. When you add management fees, trading costs, advisory fees, account fees, uh, inactivity fees, when you add all of these different things that mutual funds and these different Wall Street firms have come up with, it's not unusual for us to see individuals paying two, three, four, in some cases, 5% or more per year in fees. So if you would like this report, you can request that we run one of these for you through our office. Uh, and it's not something that we charge anything for. These are not real expensive for us to put together. It takes a little bit of time, but they're not real costly for us. And over the last 15 years, we've probably run thousands of these reports. So it's something that we're happy to do for you as well. Matt, our next question is from Alex in Clarksville. He writes, what is an appropriate annual fee for a money manager? Well, of course, the lower the better, right? Uh, but sometimes fees are unavoidable. So if you're going to have any type of a management fee that you're paying to an advisor or maybe a mutual fund company, stock brokerage company, whatever it may be, you typically want to be below 2% per year. 2% is about the maximum you would ever pay uh, or you would ever want to pay. But of course, the lower, the better. I would say on average, what we see with mutual funds is 1.5% for a management fee. Most financial advisors are going to charge an additional 1% to 2%. So you want to make sure that when you add all your fees together, that you are basically all in for less than 2%. Of course, lower the fees are, the better it might be for you. But as usual, you know, you sometimes get what you pay for. So just because there's a lower cost option out there doesn't necessarily mean that it'll be better. But you do want to make sure you're never in a situation paying more than 2% per year. Mark, do we have any more questions? Matt, believe it or not, that's all the time we have. Well, thanks, Mark. Those were some really good questions once again. I really enjoy answering the questions here on the show. If you need more information about anything that you've heard here today, please visit us on the web, tune into the weekly radio show, or we'll be right back here again next week to answer your questions and to provide some very useful tips. And remember, retirement planning is a journey, not a destination. We'll see you next time.